Batwoman Season 2 Episode 9 Title Wu Number 1. Now this episode I found to be a better episode than last week. Last week's episode I just felt was just bad and just this is, is, is bad. If you want to hear my rant last week, go watch last week's episode, uh, you know, video. But this episode still has its problems. Is there some bad writing here? Bad dialogue? Bad choices of how certain scenes plan out? Yes, yes, and yes. But there's some good stuff in this. Like, we are introduced to our new big bad for the rest of the season, and that is Warren Tadaris, aka. Black Mars, who is essentially a crime boss. He's a he's a drug lord, even though he doesn't see himself as one. He's essentially that, and he's always like in the in the context of the character, just just in general in the comics and in animation and video games, all that kind of stuff. He kind of fits his role. What normally what happens, it's like you want a crime boss and you don't want to go to the go-to's, you don't want to do a Falconia or whoever, so you go, you do Black Mask, and that's the same result, there's a, a, there's a sense of presence with Black Mask, there's a sense of threat to, towards Black Mask, he's a tired crime boss who's not afraid to get his hands dirty, like actually happy to do very gory deaths, like with a chainsaw or whatever, um, so, and plus, you know, his his appearance is probably a very enticing thing to always use. I mean, he this is a when this is a when dude wearing initially a black stole on his face. That's a very threatening and physical thing to a striking uh, appearance or a was it? But you know he does his role well, well in the uh, in this episode. You get the presence, you get that threat. Um, and, and that, so I was like, okay, cool, fine, they, they ticked the black, bo you know, black mask thing pretty well, but the rest of the episode is handled very sloppily, like, there's a scene in the end, that I'm like, Sophie, why can't you set, do this conversation over the phone, you know, and the dialogue wasn't well done, I mean, sometimes this show can go very so boppery, like, it can get really so boppery, lifetime, type of writing to the point you're just like, God, what am I listening to? What am I watching? The, you know, the romantic angles of it, the, um, the whole thing of why and unable to let go of her, of her ex and who has a criminal, uh, has a, 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 a questionable history with criminals and all that. It's, you're like, fine. You're, you're fine. It, it's, it's very so buffy and sappy and all that. And you're like, oh my God. But when it comes to the superhero angle of it, okay, that's that's when it kind of clicks. You got the stuff dealing with um, Sophie's sister, who is also introduced in this episode. I found her not annoying, but just like just badly written. Definitely her introduction scene, like she's going to the police commissioner and starts saying like, you know, you know, men, you know. Men are getting shot in the streets by your own police officers trying to, you know, Black Lives Matter and all, you know, police brutality, very important subject. But it was just handily, just the concept of the scene was good, but it's just like, it just was wish and sloppy, and I was like, could that scene just be cut out? Like, I felt like that scene could have used to be cut out. I, I, I'm just saying. I, I And we just find out more about her and, and how she's anti-authority, that she's anti-police, she's anti-Batwoman, uh, Crow, whoever, any sort of authority figure who used fists and who has weapons and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we are introduced to um, another villain called Migma, who, understanding so, I was like, oh, did they gender swap uh, the Riddler? Is it going to be Emma Migma or something? I don't know. But it turns out this is a character from the comics from the last like 15 years and it's essentially in, in concept of the, the comics she is the Edward Migma's, the, yeah, the Whittler's daughter. Um, so there's, so you're like, okay, this is, my guess it's, it's a way to have, we want the Whittler but we can't actually use the Whittler maybe because like, Batman movie coming out kind of thing. Um, so, so far we just know she has this sort of appearance and she just has this 
you know, we just know what she looks like and has a sense who she is and villain speak and all that. But the oath is the last thing to talk about is K is the whole KK situation, which was funny. How like last week I was like, they they just told us that KK is dead since you know the first episode. What's the point of this entire season? And then five minutes later, new KK going announced. I'm like, oh my god, I feel like an idiot now. Um, but what we see of Kate is her face is like unrecognizably beaten. And I'm like, okay, okay, you're not going to do the whole thing of like, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what Kate looks like now. This is, you know, um, they're going to actually have a narrative explanation. Why does Kate now look like? Doesn't look like Weaver Rose and looks like the the new person. I forgot the the name of the states me who's playing the new, um, the, the new Kate. But, um, but the one thing I I I um I had is wine is not going to is still going to be Batwoman. It's still going to be her show. But Kate's going. But we got a new Kate, which I hope they handle pretty well. I hope it doesn't feel like. Oh, I like. You, you don't want the OG basically praising and basically saying, no, you're the true Batwoman, because it just comes come across as patronizing. But um, hopefully, that kind of. Ho ha wondering how that's going to be handled. Maybe Kate's is going to be the Batwoman for the crossovers. You never know. Um, but I. Uh, I. It's a better episode. Need some work, but a better episode. It's a better episode.